Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to edit photos on your iPhone 14, iPhone 14 Pro or 14 Pro Max. Let's get started. All right, so we're using the iPhone 14 Pro for this tutorial video, but you can actually use pretty much any iPhone that has at least somewhat of a recent version of iOS. The process should be very similar. So to start, let's open up our Photos application, and you'll see we're brought to our Library section under the All Photos tab. Now, this is where we're gonna work on our edits, but you can work in any of these options down here. As long as you can open up a photo, it'll be very much the same. Now, before we move any further, I just wanna let you know there's a link in the description to the full iPhone tips, tricks, and tutorial series. So if you're looking to learn more about your iPhone, definitely check that out. Anyway, for us, let's start by just choosing a photo we want to edit. So we just tap on it, and then we can tap edit at the top right. Now this is where you're going to find all of your editing features, where you'll be able to change the size of your photo, crop it, change the look of it, and by default it should open up under this little section here. It looks like a little sun, and you'll see a little yellow icon underneath. Anytime you're working in the editor, wherever you're working, you'll see that little yellow icon so you know that's the one you're working on here. Now this photo here is just a standard photo. I'll be showing you how to edit portrait photos a little bit later in the video. And if you don't know what portrait photos are, I strongly recommend you watch the iPhone camera tutorial video. The link for that's in the description as well. It'll show you how to take photos and use all of the photo options and video options. That way when you do want to edit them, you know exactly what's going on with that photo. But either way, this video is going to be beneficial to you. And we're gonna start by tapping under this section here where the little sun is. And we're gonna go through all of these different options. And you can see you have exposure, brilliance, highlights, brightness, saturation, all of the options that'll allow you to enhance or modify this particular photo. So we'll start at the beginning and we have auto. This is gonna be an auto enhance option and when you tap on it, the iPhone is gonna automatically enhance the photo using all of these different features or options that it had. And you can see with these little circles, whenever there's a little bit filled in, that means they've been used. You can also see the little slider at the bottom, that little white dot. Anytime the line is past it on this side or this side, that means there's a modification that's been made. And even with this enhance option on, you can still modify it and change things yourself just by tapping on the option you want and then using the slider like so. If you wanna turn off the auto enhance at any time, you can just go back to the beginning, tap on it and it'll revert back to its original. You can then go through these options on your own and change them yourself. So we'll tap exposure here and then we can really make this photo overexposed. We can add some brightness or reduce the brightness if we want. And if you wanna see what it looks like without that particular brightness added in or that option added in, you can just tap on it and it'll show you what it looked like before you made that little bit of edit. You can tap to bring it back. And when you're happy with this, you can either tap done or continue editing with any one of these options down here as well. So we'll continue editing. Let's say we wanted to modify the size. We have this option right here. So we'll tap on that. And this brings up some more features here as well as some features at the top. So first off, let's start from the top. We have this one right here and that just flips the photo over. A big problem with the iPhones, they tend to flip when you open the Photos app. So if you ever need to flip a photo so that it looks the other way, it's this little option right here at the top left. You're just gonna tap it and flip your photo so that it's in the right direction. The next one beside it is a rotation and you can rotate the photos just by tapping and you can see we can rotate them. So for whatever reason your photo is upside down or sideways or even your video, you can flip it right over just like that. To the right side, we have this one option here, and this is how you can resize your photo. It starts with freeform, which will allow you to freehand adjust the photo. You can then crop it down to be exactly what you want it to look like. You also have a square option here, and it'll give you the perfect square. A wallpaper so that it fits your phone's wallpaper accurately. A nine by 16, four by five, five by seven, three by four, three by five, or two by three. And no matter which option you choose, you can move the photo inside it so that way exactly what you want in the photo is fitting in there. You can also pinch 
and zoom in and out so you can pull more into that photo or more out of that photo. That way, if you're planning to print this out, it's gonna look exactly the way you wanted it from the beginning. If you make a mistake or you wanna revert back to the original, you come all the way back to the left side here, tap original, and it'll put it back. This next option here will take it to a rectangular or horizontal landscape mode photo. If you've taken it in this portrait, which is the vertical, you can flip it to horizontal and again, you'll have all of these options to use at the same time. So let's revert back to the original here. We'll zoom right back out and we'll tap on that option here again to disable it. And now we're at the bottom right here. Now, when you open this section for resizing, these options are here by default. And the first one here will give you the ability to kind of turn the photo while it zooms in. And you can take this as far as you want up to 45 degrees, and then you can go all the way back 45 degrees the opposite way. So you can kind of angle your photo if you needed to. The next one here is going to give you sort of a stretched bottom effect. It, it kind of fattens out the bottom and slims it down. These are good if you find that you're not accurate on your line. So maybe you were taking a picture of something and the top was too close to the side and the bottom wasn't. You can then kind of stretch it out just a bit to straighten things out and make it look better. And then this one right here curves things to the left and to the right. So it's kind of pulling the left upwards giving you that effect. And if you go the opposite way, it pulls the right side sort of upwards, giving you that sort of effect. And it does help a lot. I find that I use this feature quite a bit to straighten photos out and just make them look better. So definitely keep in mind it's there if you need it. So those are the size features you have with your iPhone editor. Let's go down again here to this option, which is our filters. And this is just basically filters like you would see on Instagram or even in the camera app itself. So if you wanna overlay a filter onto your photo, you can. And then the last option here is your live photo. So again, in the camera app tutorial, I show you what live photos are and what they do. But basically, if you've taken a live photo, it records a little bit before and a little bit after of that photo so that way let's say you had a photo where someone was blinking you can actually move to a specific keyframe in that photo you can see it's moving and find the exact moment where everybody was smiling and not blinking and then you can make that your key photo but right now we're going to keep it where it is actually let's move it right here it's a little more centered and we'll tap make key photo so now that's the position our photo is going to be in and we can continue editing with all of the editing features now there's another editing option at the top right. It looks like a little pen with a circle around it and that's called the markup tool. When you tap on it, it opens up a page like this and what it's going to do is allow you to mark up or draw on your photo. Now you have all the accessories you need at the bottom here and we'll start with the first one, which is a simple pen. And when you choose the pen, you'll see that it kind of pops above the rest of your pens and pencils. If you tap on it a second time, you'll be able to select the thickness and how bright or how see-through it'll actually be. So just for this example, we use the max thickness so you can see, and we have it selected. We can tap on the color here to change the color if we want. We'll go with green for this, and then you can just start writing on your photo and you can see how it looks right there. If you make a mistake, you can always tap on the undo option or you have an option down here where you can tap on the eraser and you can use the eraser to just erase various parts of it that you may have made a mistake with. It works the same with the highlighter. You can tap it a second time to grab the thickness here and highlighting is perfect. So you would wanna make it not as uh, bold. You would wanna make it a little more see-through and we're gonna choose a red color here. So let's say we wanted to highlight something like the Walkman sign here. We're just gonna highlight it. This is perfect if you've downloaded PDFs or if you have schoolwork on your phone or your iPad, you can highlight it right here. And then you have a pencil which works exactly the same way. Now this option right here, if we tap it, is a selection tool. This will allow you to select anything you've added in already. So if we added this here, we can just circle around it. It'll select the whole thing and you can just tap it and drag it anywhere on the screen. So if you needed to move it or move it out of the way, or even if you wanted to zoom in, you could do that. And then to exit, you just tap away. The next option is a ruler, and this just brings up a little ruler like this. You can use two fingers to turn it around. It's a little difficult here the way it's positioned for my hands, but there you go. So we can make it like a straight line like this, and then we can just take any of our writing accessories and then just draw your line. To remove the ruler, you're just going to tap on the ruler one more time. Now to the right, we have a plus. If we tap on the plus, you have some other options here. 
I'm only gonna go through the ones that will really modify this photo. You can play with the rest yourself. So we'll tap on text, which is going to allow you to actually write on the photo. So you can see you have these two little anchors on the left and right that'll allow you to pull it open and make it a little larger for yourself. On the bottom, you have the color that you wanna write with. We'll stick with black. You have these two double A's. If you tap on them, you can change the font face to any of these, and you can even make the text larger if you want it, and then you can center it any way you'd want as well. We'll tap on it a second time to open up this option at the top where you have cut, copy, delete, edit, and duplicate. You're gonna tap edit to start writing, and we'll just write test. And then to finish, you just tap away, and now your text is there. Now anytime if you have to move your text, you're just gonna tap on it, and you can just drag it around wherever you want. So if we wanted it more up to the left there, you could do so. You can even take two fingers and angle it just like we did with the uh, ruler. So now it's a little bit angled. And as you're editing, no matter where you are on the editor, you can always zoom in. So if something's too small, you can zoom right in. Say we wanted to circle something here, we're zoomed in, just circle it like so. And then you can zoom back out with two fingers like that. Now this is a little bit tedious. I made a little mistake there, but I'm gonna hit the undo and it'll remove it. So if you ever have that issue, Again, that's how it works. We'll tap the plus one more time. Signature, we're gonna skip over. Magnifier is a little bit of a more advanced feature, but you can see what it does. It's just gonna magnify, and you have some anchors on it as well. So if you wanted to magnify more of the photo, you could. We'll tap plus again, and then you have your shapes. So you have a square, circle, a little pop-up for words if you wanted to add that in, and then you have some arrows here. So we'll just add in a square to be quick here, and you can see how the square looks. We'll change the color to red. You have all of these different anchors, so if you need to reshape it, you could. If you tap on this option here, you can even fill the square in if you wanted to. Make the font or the thickness smaller or larger, and that's pretty much how that works. Works the same way with all of the other shapes. They'll have their own options in that little box, but that's pretty much how you use the markup tool. And tap Done to save it. Tap done, and this is how your photo looks, exactly the way you would want it, obviously. But if it's not, you can always tap edit. You see that we have a revert option down here, and this will revert all the edits back to the original. Tap revert, prompts you here, tap revert to original, and your original photo is back the way it was when you first took that picture. Now when it comes to editing portrait mode photos, it works pretty much the same way. There are just a few extra edits here. This is a portrait photo. You can see it says portrait right there. If we tap edit like normal, again, we can see portrait in yellow at the top. And basically what the portrait photos are is a blurred background effect with the focus on the subject. And again though, if you don't know what portrait is or you don't know how to use it, check out the camera tutorial on my channel. Now we're on this little cube down here. And we also have this option at the top left selected. When you have those options selected, you can change the lighting effect of the portrait photo. So right now we're using the natural light. We can just drag across to go to the studio light, contour light, stage light, stage light mono, and then the high key light mono. And in each of these options, no matter which one you have selected here of the lighting effects other than the first one, you do have a dial underneath which will allow you to control the amount of light. So you just focus on that little part of the cactus. You can see how you can control how much light is being brought into the subject using this dial and it'll work with all of these as well. Now we're going to move back to the original here that we had and there's another option at the top left here called f.45. This is basically your f-stop or your depth of field so the amount of blur in the background. When we tap on that we can actually increase the blur or decrease the background blur. It's totally up to you where you want to put it, but you'll have total control so the photo will look exactly the way you want. And then you can always tap on the portrait at the top and it'll turn off the portrait mode completely giving you a standard photo and you won't have any of the portrait options enabled. But we'll turn that on and leave it as is and we'll move back down to the bottom where we have our effects again. So our exposure, brilliance, shadows, brightness, all that good stuff that we can play with here as well. When we're editing, you can enhance it with the auto enhance. You also have your filters down here, your resizing right here. And if we just go back to the beginning here, this little option at the top there with the little eye, this is actually a red eye removal. If we tap on it, you'll see that it's prompting us down here to tap each red eye. If you ever see this, even on standard photos, 
that's there because you have the ability to take away the red eye in photos. So you would just tap on the two eyes and it would remove it for you. I don't have any here, but that's where that feature is. Tap done to save it. Now this next option is a little bit more advanced and it was just brought in with iOS 16, but basically it allows you to pull out a subject from the photo and remove the background. So for example, we have this one right here and let's say we wanted to pull out this little Walkman here. We could just tap on it and drag. And as soon as we do that, you can see that we've pulled that photo right out. And what you can do when you have this here is just tap on the back button and you can just let go and it'll be brought into your album like this. And you can see the background is completely removed. So if you do eBay or you sell on any online site and you wanna remove the background from some of your photos, this is a quick and easy way to do so. Now, if we go to a photo here that has more things in the photo, like more subjects in it, it's gonna work a little bit differently because what it's doing is pulling whatever it can kind of grasp in the certain area of the photo. So if I try to grab this, it's a little bit more tedious because there's more in there. And it's also trying to read the writing. But if I grab here, you can see I've pulled that out. So it's a little bit annoying that it will grab multiple things in the photo, but if you let go, and you've added that in there like this, you can still edit and then just crop out what you didn't need. And that way you still have exactly what you wanted, but it's going to be a little bit tedious. I can't stress that enough, especially with live photos. The live photo kind of wants to play. So if you did take it with live on, it may play. So the best thing you can do in those situations is to go to the editor, go to the live and then turn it off up there and then tap done and then you can grab it a lot easier. It's still a little bit tedious, but it's more of a just grab and pull like so. And you kind of can see like when you get it, how it does that sort of flash. And additionally, you can share this. So if you do this uh, motion here, so for example, we just grab it like this. If we let go, or try, you'll see that you'll get options up here. You can share it on Facebook or all your social medias to your messages. Or if you're like me, you want to drag it to a note, you just kind of grab it. And with your other finger, you can then go back or pull up to go home, tap your notes. When you get to a new note, just let go and it'll just add it to your notes. So if you needed it there for whatever reason or you wanna throw it in your files, you can as well. Just a cool little thing that Apple introduced with iOS 16 here. And you can use that with the Photos app and the editor. So that's how you edit your photos on the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro. If you're looking for more great tips, tricks, and tutorials, there's that link in the description to the full playlist of iPhone videos that'll help you get the most out of it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'm happy to help you out. And if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell notification box to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.